Hey guys, Micah here from ebikeschool.com and today I'm doing a review of the Swagtron EB5, an awesome little $499 electric bicycle. Now you might remember that a couple of weeks ago my wife and I unboxed this bike and its little brother, the EB1. While they're both great bikes, I like the EB5 better, which is why I want to focus my review on this one. The EB1 is also a nice e-bike, and despite it being a bit cheaper, it also has a lower top speed and a lower range, which is why I like the EB5 a bit more. But if you want to see my side-by-side -side review of the two e-bikes, you can find that in an article I wrote for Electrek, and in a video I posted on Electrek's YouTube video, so check out both of those. Now for the EB5. This e-bike is small, but it's actually kind of awesome. With a top speed of 15 and a half miles per hour, it's not going to win many races, but that's plenty fast for bike lanes and trails, and it makes this e-bike a perfect city commuter bike. The range is also 15 and a half miles, which is probably further than most people ride on a single trip in cities, so you can probably get away without charging it very often. I've been using it as my main grocery getter e-bike for the last few weeks, and I've been charging it around once a week, which I think is pretty impressive for such a small bike without a giant battery. Also, another plus I've found is that the battery is hidden inside of the frame, so it doesn't even really look like an e-bike. It just looks like sort of a weird little bike, so I feel like thieves might be less interested in it, and they'd rather steal something that looks like they could sell it quicker than something that looks kind of like an odd specialty bike like this. Now the bike is obviously small, and I'm not giant either at 5 foot 7 or 1.7 meters, but the bike feels as comfortable to me as large bikes that I've ridden. At a certain point, as long as the seat is high enough and the handlebars are out in front of you, it doesn't really matter how big the bike is, it'll adjust to fit most people, even those over 6 feet tall. Plus, the advantage of it being so small is that I can fold it up to a tiny size to toss in a trunk or a stash under my desk at work. I can even ride the bike around inside the elevator of my building. I can't do that with any other e-bike I own. And the e-bike is also nice and lightweight, at just 36 pounds. Of course, things aren't entirely rosy, and there are some downsides to this e-bike. It does not have a lot of extra features or components, so that means no suspension, no fancy display, just a simple battery indicator, and no shifters, gears, or other parts like that. But that's also kind of a plus. To achieve the low $499 price, the designers didn't just choose low-quality components, instead they left out a lot of components. But that means that, for example, you're not going to be able to shift gears, but you also aren't going to have your shifter or derailleur falling apart or breaking after 50 miles. And the money they saved by leaving out a bunch of cheap parts means they can have better quality parts for the ones that remain. The parts that they do include definitely seem like good quality. Sure, I've seen nicer brake levers, but these definitely do not feel cheap or flimsy. I'd love to see an included headlight and taillight, but for such a cheap price, I guess I can splurge on some accessories myself. So my final verdict is that I think this is probably one of the best bang-for-your-buck e-bikes out there. Sure, there are better e-bikes, but they cost three to four times the price, and they definitely are not three to four times as good. So if all you need is a simple e-bike for getting around the campus or getting around the city, why would you pay three to four times as much? This is a great starter e-bike, and for those that don't want to invest in an expensive system just to get the benefits of e-bikes, this could be a great e-bike for you. Thanks for watching, guys. Check the description below for links for more information and to find out where to purchase this electric bicycle. And as always, I hope you'll like this video and feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos in the future. Last but not least, it's time for the ebikeschool.com book giveaway. And the winner of one of my books from my last video is... Peter! So congratulations, Peter. You can find my contact info on my channel page. Shoot me a message. Let me know where to send your book and which one of my books you'd like. Either the Ultimate Do-It-Yourself e-bike guide, DIY Lithium Batteries, or DIY Solar Power. And anybody else who wants to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment below this video and make sure that you're a subscriber to my channel and I will be choosing one of the commenters randomly at the end of my next video to win another one of my books. And if you don't want to wait for a free book, you guys can always find my books on Amazon. Thanks for watching. See you next time.